Yesterday we had a special message. The concluding message in regards to the Holy Spirit of God. That the promise of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, and the blessings of the Holy Spirit. It was, it was really a blessing to me. I was meditating upon the blessing that comes to man and woman through the power of the Holy Spirit of God. So many blessings, so many blessings. So that we completed and our blessing, our messages on regards to the Holy Spirit of God was complete. The promise of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, and then the blessings of the Holy Spirit that we saw yesterday. Today I have taken a new series according to the guidance of God. The gospel in regards to the kingdom of God. The gospel in regards to the kingdom of God. When God the Father was speaking to the Old Testament people, he was always telling them, remember the kingdom. And even when he sent a man to deliver the people of Israel in Egypt, God was telling him, remember, you have to bring my people out. They shall worship me. They shall know the kingdom of God. God was speaking through all the mighty men and women of God in the Old Testament. And it was all connected to the kingdom of God. When Jesus Christ of Nazareth came into the New Testament, at the New Testament time, even Jesus Christ of Nazareth was speaking about the kingdom of God and telling every man and every woman. But the Bible clearly says, before Jesus Christ of Nazareth could come into this world, John the Baptist was born. John the Baptist was born six months ago before Jesus Christ of Nazareth could be born. And John the Baptist started already the ministry of water baptism, preaching the word of God, teaching the word of God. And the first preaching and teaching of John the Baptist was also repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. I was meditating what is the meaning about that that John was preaching about. That John said repent because kingdom of God is at hand. Is it the physical hand that we think about that kingdom of our God is so close? And then I was, when I was meditating, I understood that God was speaking through John the Baptist and telling the people that they should repent for their sins and they should remember the kingdom of God is at hand. It means the kingdom of God is at a very close distance. It is depending upon you whether you accept it or reject it. It's closer to your life, very closer to your life, very closer to your life, very, very closer to your life. You accept it or reject it. You don't think about it. You may be a loser of the kingdom of God. But when you think about it, you can think that my life one day will end on the earth. Life on the earth, no matter with silver, gold, with fame, name, money, fashion, coat, clothes, everything will end. Your beauty, your handsomeness, everything will disappear. But where our soul is going to go, we have to think about. And John the Baptist was telling everybody, and he was giving the word about some at the river of Jordan, so that the people of Samaria, people of Jordan, people of Jordan River, people of all type of people shall come to know the salvation and come to know the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord and so also the God's mercy upon the people of God so they shall concentrate upon the kingdom of God more than anything else. He did not promise them that when you take the water baptism, you will get silver, gold, money, property, this, that. No, he was only talking about two important things. Your sins will be forgiven and the kingdom of God will be very close to you. It means you are very close to the kingdom of God when you take the water baptism. All the sins will be forgiven. You will become a righteous man and righteous woman and you are very close to the kingdom of God. The day you pass away from the earth, the second day you will be there. At the same moment, not the second, same moment you will open your eyes in the kingdom of God. That's what John the Baptist was preaching. Tonight I got this message, the gospel of the kingdom of God, which is also proclaimed by Jesus Christ our Lord. First it was told by John the Baptist, then Jesus Christ our Lord. And the Bible speaks in Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23, the Bible speaks about and Whenever Jesus Christ of Nazareth went around preaching and teaching the gospel, he was known a man from Nazareth, a man of Galilee, a man who is chosen by God, a man who was carpenter's son. Peculiarly, people were knowing about the area because in every area he went, he talked about the kingdom of God. And he was concerned that people should know about the kingdom of God and they all should know, young men, old those who are alive, they all should be able to understand 
that one day our life will end on the earth and after the life is finished on the earth where my soul has to go every man has to see think every young man has to think every young girl has to think every old man has to think and every old woman has to think that's what jesus was proclaiming proclaiming the gospel in different areas he went to judea he went to samaria he went to galilee he went to nazareth he went to different areas and wherever he preached he was recognized by his preaching and by his way of activities and therefore the bible clearly says in mark chapter matthew chapter 4 verse 23 and jesus went about all galilee here it is mentioned jesus went all about galilee he was preaching in galilee teaching in their synagogues and Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. This is my message tonight. My message is not from my mind. My message is from the word of God. Word of God when preaches you. Word of God is given unto you. Word of God is taught unto you. Word of God is giving you any word you concentrate. Why God is speaking to us through the gospel. Why God is telling us through the gospel. What is the purpose that God wants to tell us tonight? What is that Jesus was proclaiming the gospel, walking all around, never had a special car, never had a special boat, never owned any houses, never had any matter of luxury, but walking miles together. The Bible says, again, I will read for you, and Jesus went all, sorry, Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And and healing all manner of sicknesses and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease among the people and all manner of disease among the people people whoever was suffering with the sicknesses he healed them all whoever was suffering with diseases he healed them all it means people whoever were under oppression of the evil of, of, uh, uh, under the darknesses under the power of sickness and evil holds Jesus went on delivering them and doing that work in the synagogues and in the in Galilee. Remember the Bible clearly says that was the work of the Lord continuously happening and happening and happening so that they shall see the victory of God and success of God in man and woman's life. That was the purpose of God. And the Bible clearly says in Mark chapter 1 verse 14. Mark chapter 1 verse 14. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Remember, the Bible clearly says, when John was preaching so boldly, and preaching the kingdom of God, and declaring the works of the Holy Spirit of God, and said, every man and every woman must receive Jesus Christ, and must be born again in the water, and preaching them and teaching them about the kingdom of God. If you want to enter into the kingdom of God, you must get forgiveness of your sins. John was telling, if you want to go to the kingdom, of God, you must first confess your sins. If you want to go to the kingdom of God, your sins must be washed away. Tonight, who can tell I have no sin? Who can tell that I have not committed any sin? Including me, we are all sinners and we commit sins and we disturb our lives by the sins. But the Bible clearly says, John the Baptist was telling every man and every woman, even in the kingdom of that area, he was telling them, you must repent, you must repent, you must repent because the kingdom of God is very close. Kingdom of God is at hand. You must enter into the kingdom of God. That was the burden that John the Baptist had. And because of that, he was taken up, he was caught, he was taken to the prison and the bible says now after john after that john was put in the prison in prison jesus came into galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of god then jesus started preaching jesus started preaching the gospel jesus did not wait he started preaching the gospel that john the baptist was preaching and the mark chapter mark chapter, sorry matthew chapter 9 was 34 and 35 Matthew chapter 9 verse 34 and 35 says, But the Pharisees said, He casteth out devils through the prince of the devils. Jesus Christ of Nazareth casting out devils, healing the sick. By the devil he is doing this work. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is not a true. That's what the Pharisees, who were these Pharisees? They were learned people. They were educated. They were Christians. But they did not understand the work of Jesus. Jesus was doing this work to show them that when you are trusting in the kingdom of God, you are getting healed, you are getting delivered, you are getting blessed, you should be water baptized, and the kingdom of God is open for you. Your sins has to be forgiven. That's what Jesus Christ of Nazareth was telling everyone. Then the Bible says in verse 35, And Jesus went about all cities 
and villages. Jesus went everywhere, every cities, every villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching and, the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And he was healing the sicknesses and he was healing the people, those who were sick and weak and those who were possessed by the devils. The Bible says Jesus was doing this and proclaiming the gospel. Word of God also says in Mark chapter 1, in Mark chapter 1 verse 15, and he was also saying the same thing what John the Baptist was preaching and proclaiming. John the Baptist was telling kingdom of God is at hand, repent and be baptized. His concern was that everyone should repent for their sins. Today nobody can say I have no sin. Remember this is very very important that you should be able to understand and get rid of your sins and my sins. The Bible says in verse 15 and saying time is fulfilled. Time is fulfilled. Time is completed. Time is very close and the kingdom of God is He's at hand. hand. Repent ye and, and believe the gospel. the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent and accept Jesus Christ. Repent and be baptized. This is the preaching, proclaiming the gospel through Jesus Christ our Lord was going on. The word of the Lord clearly said this was very, very important. To call upon the name of the Lord, to repent for your sins, to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, to take the full immersion of water baptism so that your sins shall be washed away. Every unwanted thing shall disappear from your life. My brothers, my sister, why sin is talked about? Bible says sin brings disastrous things in your life. Sin brings problems, horrors, pain and agony in your life. Why this happens? Because whenever you and I sin, we go away from God and the devil has an upper hand to touch us, to divide us, to trouble us, to disturb us and in every way he can take an advantage of our lives. And therefore Jesus Christ of Nazareth was telling them and proclaiming the gospel, repent and be baptized for the kingdom of God is close, kingdom of God is near, kingdom of God is at hand. The Bible says the final thing, he was also telling them it is very, very important Luke chapter 4, 42 and 41, 42 and 43. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place. And the people sought him and came unto him and stayed with him, that he should not depart from them. Then verse 43 says, and he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities. Also. I must preach the kingdom of God. I must preach the kingdom of God. Who is saying? Jesus is saying, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. For therefore I am sent. I have not come according to my will. God has sent me here to preach the gospel. To teach the gospel. And to tell the world for what purpose Jesus Christ of Nazareth has come. Jesus Christ of Nazareth came with a purpose. Why? What was that purpose? To die for the sinners like us. To die on the cross of Calvary. Shed the entire blood that he had in his body. When Jesus was taken up and when Jesus started his ministry of preaching and teaching the gospel of kingdom of God, he was at the age of 30. And at the age of 33, they put him on the cross of Calvary where he was shedding the blood for the remission of my sins and your sins and giving the price or paying the penalty of our sins so that you and I, because of our sins, we shall not go to the hellfire, but we shall enter into the kingdom of God. The Bible clearly says, and he said unto them, I must preach the gospel. I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore I am sent. I am sent for this purpose, and therefore I must preach. The word of the Lord clearly says, Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The word of the Lord clearly says, that when Jesus was sent with this purpose, he was fulfilling the purpose. The Bible also says to us, that when Jesus was preaching this, his disciples were with him. And he also taught the disciples, remember, today also my brothers and sisters, today so many people need healing, deliverance, so many type of blessings of God. But if their soul is not saved, it is too dangerous to all other things to do it. They must also get healed, they must also get delivered, they must also know the kingdom of God, they must repent. They must know the kingdom of God. Christian, just doing the Christian services and masses and prayers, we cannot go to the kingdom of heaven just 
doing all these religious practices. Bible does not promise. Bible says one has to repent. One has to understand his sins. One has to recognize Jesus. One has to accept Jesus Christ. One has to be fully water baptized. And then he shall prepare himself so that his sin shall be washed, her sin shall be washed, and their soul shall be saved for the kingdom of God. And that is the purpose that Jesus had come. Today is the first series that the kingdom of God or the gospel is talking about the kingdom. And this we have started with the word of God saying that the proclamation of the gospel started with John the Baptist, then started with Jesus Christ our Lord. Then after Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was proclaiming this gospel? The apostles and the disciples. The Bible speaks about Luke chapter 9 verses 1 and 2. In Luke chapter 9 verses 1 and 2, the Bible clearly says, Then Jesus paid the penalty of our sin on the cross. Jesus died and was buried in the tomb, borrowed tomb. Jesus rose again on the third day. And when Jesus rose again on the third day, what exactly happened? He was 40 full days and 40 full nights on the earth, met the disciples, met his people, met all the people, those who are waiting for his resurrection. He went into the town of different areas and villages. And after that, Jesus was ascended into heaven. After Jesus was taken up into heaven, then the disciples, they started preaching and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. Let us hear that. Luke chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority <clears throat> over all devils and to cure diseases. This you must always remember. Therefore, when you become a child of God, when you start serving the Lord God Almighty, when you started preaching the gospel to others, you must be able to understand this is what Jesus has done. He called the twelve disciples, he gave them the power, and he also gave them the authority over the devils. So today we need not to worry and we need not to be afraid about the devils. And we should always know that God has given us the authority. Jesus also has given us the power and the authority over all devils. All devils. Bible says all devils, whatever fallen devils are there. And they have another devils, all devils. And to cure diseases. To cure all manner of diseases. All diseases. Cure diseases. The verse 2 says... And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And then also to send, uh, to preach, sorry. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God. My brothers, my sister, all the time disciples also preach the kingdom of God. Today this series we have started with one intention. That you must be able to understand there is a kingdom of God. Number two, how you can get into that kingdom. Number three, are you listening to the gospel and are you listening to the preaching? Are you listening to the holy word of God to get into that kingdom is very, very important. Tonight, God is speaking to you and telling you, you must know about the kingdom of God. You must be able to enter into the kingdom of God. For that purpose, Jesus has come on the earth and no other purpose. Today, we may do so many other religious practices, but the Bible assures you, you cannot get into the kingdom of God. And therefore, you should be able to understand the word of the Lord clearly says in same gospel, verses 59 and 60. Luke chapter 9, verse 59 and 60. And he said unto another, follow me. But he called everyone individually, 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 every brother, every sister. Thank God that you are saved. Thank God you are able to hear the word of God. Thank God you are able to hear the preaching of the gospel. Thank God you are knowing the word of God. Thank God that you are holding the Bible. And you know that God is telling you something to do it. And you are doing it. Thank God for that. And the Bible clearly says, and he, he said, called individually. He called them and said, follow me. When he saw Peter at the boat and Peter was checking his net and cleaning his neck for the next catch. And he looked into the Peter and he told, told Peter or he said to Peter, Peter, follow me. And he followed him. The Bible says he also saw a tax collector at the gate. When he saw the tax collector, he looked at the tax collector and he asked him what exactly he is doing. And after that, he immediately looked into the tax collector and he said, come on, follow me. The tax collector, the fisherman, the educated tax collector, the uneducated fisherman never questioned Jesus Christ, why I have to follow you. They never questioned. But we learned people, we have education, we have knowledge, but yet we don't know how to follow Jesus Christ. We follow according to our mind. We follow according to religious practices. We, we don't realize even some of our religious practices are wrong. We don't realize that. And we don't follow properly. And still we keep on doing the mistakes and mistakes and mistakes and problems. 
And therefore the Bible says, and he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Then what happened? Come on, read it, brother. Verse 60. Jesus said unto him. No, no, no. 59 and 6. 59 and 60 together. Verse 59. And he said unto another, follow me. But, but he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Let me go and bury my father. Many people are worried about the burial. He is also one among them. Where I will be worried. Where my father will be buried. I have to finish this burial of my father. We are thinking it very, very important. My brothers, my sister, all this time of this COVID, all this year, so many deaths took place. None of the relatives could bury their own. None of the relatives. I used to pray for the people in Mubarak Hospital, in Farwana Hospital. And when I used to hear they are with the COVID, I used to pray honestly whenever there is a time permitted or whenever they are having the mobile with them. Or sometimes they used to take the doctor's mobile or nurse's mobile and call me and pray with me. During that time, we used to pray. And then the nurses used to have the phones. Sometimes the doctors used to have the phone numbers. And they used to call me and tell me, you remember you were praying for this patient? I tell him, doctor, how is he? They said, sorry to inform you, last night he passed away. Early morning he passed away. She passed away. And when they give the message, they said, what to do? We tried our level best. Are you relative? I used to tell them, I'm a pastor. I'm praying for them, for their healing. You prayed a lot. We also tried a lot. But we could not save them. They passed away. Then I asked the doctor, one of the doctors who actually, I don't want to reveal the name. I just asked him, what exactly is the formality? No formality, he says. No formalities for this body, such bodies. There will be three wrappers, one plastic wrapper first, the second plastic wrapper, the third plastic wrapper, where there will be a visibility so that they can be able to see the face. But nobody is able to see that face. These are come from abroad, prepared like that, but nobody can see. Only we can pack it and we can show them the video to the relatives that see, this is the person, they say yes. Then they confirm with the documents, immediately from that room, straight away to the graveyard. Nobody is visiting, nobody is seeing. It's within one hour to two hours of time, everything is done. I asked him, they don't, relatives don't see? They said, no way to see. They don't come, they're not allowed to come. And the people, those who are coming with the complete covering, they are taking the body and burying. There's no prayer done, there is nothing is done. If you tell them we want to pray, they will say pray at home. Nurses also called me and told me the same thing. My brothers, my sister, burial will give so much of importance. Hours together, services are going on. That body's soul is already gone to heaven or hell, wherever it may be. We cannot change any situation. During this COVID time, the burials which have taken place, think about that. Think about those burials. No relative attended. Nobody has done any spiritual rituals. They were just taken and buried. And this man is saying, let me go and bury my father because he wanted to do all the religious practices. In India also, I've been surprised. More than foreign countries, I've noticed in India. That India, if any of the, any of the preacher or any of the preacher of the gospel, when they pass away, there are so much of big processions and so much of big lorries and so much of garlands and so much of things are going on and preparation procession is going on. Then the burial is taking place and we are not able to understand being a preacher, how the burial has to be done and how much time we have to give it for prayers or whatsoever it may be. Nevertheless, this man also was thinking about that and he said, let me go and bury my father. Then the Bible says, Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead. Jesus but, said, Let the dead bury the dead. But, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. You go and preach the kingdom of God. God was not, Jesus was not worried about the people, those who are already dead, and they should be buried comfortably. They should be wearing suits, and they should be wearing perfumes, and they should have a good gloves and everything, and then they should be buried with a good coffin. Jesus was not worried about all that. Then what he was worried about? He was worried about the soul. That they shall not know, or they are not knowing about the kingdom of God. Therefore, this man, you leave your father's body, Leave your father's dead body. Go and preach the gospel about the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God's word and kingdom of God's gospel is very, very important for you and I. Jesus gave more importance to the preaching of the gospel. Dead cannot hear the gospel. Dead cannot save their souls. Dead cannot understand the word of the Lord. Dead cannot know Jesus Christ our Lord. Dead cannot do anything after they are dead. 
But those who are living, they must know the kingdom of God. They must save their souls and they must be able to save the souls of their own. And this is what the concern was that Jesus told the disciples, called them also twelve and told them and commanded them to go and preach the gospel for the kingdom of God. Then Jesus also told the individuals to go and preach the gospel and told the individual man who wanted to bury his father, leave that burial and go and preach the gospel of the kingdom of God so that people can be saved. So today those who are hearing the gospel here, what is important in your life? Religion? Christianity? Or practice of the Christianity? No, you have to see whether your soul is saved or not. You have to see whether you have Jesus in your heart or not. You have to see whether you and I have repented for our sins and taken the, the full emotion of water baptism and saved our souls. Very, very important. Man cannot be saved unless and until he has Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Man and woman cannot be saved unless and until they have Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And if you want to confirm about that, you know, accepting Jesus Christ in the spiritual realm, if you want to confirm, that confirmation is through the full emotion of water baptism. When you have taken the full emotion of water baptism, you have saved your soul. You have known about the kingdom of God. The day that you hit the bucket here, the day that you pass away from here, you are going to get into the kingdom of God. Otherwise, definitely no. Definitely no, definitely no. No Christians are going to enter. Nowadays I'm watching, I have so much of time. I watch the clips, I study the word of God. I'm practicing the people, those who are preaching. I'm hearing them. I'm getting into the Bible. I'm checking the Bible here and there. There are many scholars, many prophetical people are there. Many prophecies are given. But why? They were not able to tell anything about the COVID-19. What is under control of God? Nobody can change. What is under the control of the living God? Nobody can change. Nobody can say anything about that. God will never allow them to speak anything because it is God who is control of all situations. And today God is telling you, remember the kingdom of God. You must be able to remember the kingdom of God. We must be able to concentrate on the kingdom of God. Though there are so many things are there into this world, our heart goes for that. Riches, silver, gold, luxury cars, all type of bungalows, all type of fashionable things. No doubt. Requirement is there, necessity is there, have it, but don't give a heart for all these things because this is not going to take you to the kingdom of God. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ, only the holy word of Jesus Christ, only the preaching of the word of God, only the laws and commandments of God is going to take you to the kingdom of God. You have to think today, not tomorrow. Therefore, lies we have to stop. Unwanted things we have to stop. We have to concentrate on the word of God. We have to fear God and live according to God's word. You cannot do anything according to your own mind. Coming back to the word of God, the Bible clearly says the next important thing. Even Paul, after that Jesus Christ of Nazareth anointed all the teachers, preachers, all, everybody. Jesus Christ of Nazareth was ascended to heaven. After that, Saul was convicted for doing wrong things against Christians. On the way of Damascus, when he wanted to go and capture the Christians, those who are worshipping God in the truth, believers wanted to bring them to Rome and burn them. Wanted to bring them and put them before the lions. Wanted to bring them and persecute and make the Romans and Jewish people to laugh at them. When he was on the way, Paul was touched by the power of the Lord God Almighty. The light of Jesus Christ of Nazareth shone upon him. He became blind, but he got the power to understand who has touched him. He said, who are you, Lord? The day that his heart was convicted, he changed himself. He followed the word of God. He followed that light which has changed his life. And what Paul started doing it. Paul is the only one who did not frighten, did not get frightened. He went on preaching and teaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. The first man anointed by the power of the Lord. And the Bible clearly says, Acts chapter 17, verses 1 to 3. Now, Acts, when, Acts chapter 17, verses 1 to 3. Please, yes. Now when they had passed through the Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of Jesus. The Bible clearly Jews. says synagogue means churches. Where synagogue, where Jesus also preached the gospel. And Paul is gone to synagogue to preach the gospel. And what he was preaching and how he was preaching. Look at this word, verse 2. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. The Bible clearly says, and Paul, 
as his manner was, went in unto them. He went to the people, those who were at synagogue. They were pastors, they were preachers, they were teachers, they were holding the gospel in their you know, hands, armpits. Not only that, they, they knew about Jesus Christ, they knew about the gospel, but they did not know the power of God and the power of the gospel. And what happened when he went there? And they, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. He started reasoning there. He started asking the reason. Do you know why I'm preaching? Do you know why I'm converted? Do you know why I'm come to preach the gospel? You know why I'm standing at the synagogue? Do you know why I'm come to talk to you? Because you are the preacher of the gospel. You are the teacher of the gospel. You know why I have come? He was reasoning them with the scriptures. Telling them and explaining them the scriptures and also asking them the scriptures and debating with the scriptures with the scholars, with the scribes, with the Pharisees, with the Sadducees in the synagogue. And the Bible says, verse 3, Opening and alleging that Christ must needs to have, needs have suffered and risen again from the dead and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. What I'm preaching, the the, the preaching is not of anybody else about Jesus Christ. The one who came down, the one who died on the cross, one who was buried and rose again on the third day, who is a living God, not a dead God. And that Christ I'm preaching unto you. You are preaching Christ, but you are not understanding about whom you are preaching. You are preaching thinking Jesus is dead, Christ is dead, and therefore you are having this type of preaching. And he was explaining and making them to reason and understand. The Bible says, one more time, one, two, three, quickly go together. Opening. Okay. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came through Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. The, the Bible clearly says, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Christ means the Savior of the world. Jesus means the one who saves you. And the Bible clearly says both the meanings are connected to his life to give life and bring you to the saving grace of God. And that saving grace of God for what purpose? That you should be saved. Your soul should be saved. Why? What is the purpose of all that? That you should be in the kingdom of God where Jesus is in the kingdom of God today. That is the purpose. That was his purpose. You look at me, I died on the cross, you take my name and you think about my blood, all this is right. Therefore Jesus said when, the, when all of them were crying and saying, let your blood be upon our, us and upon our children, he said, do not cry for me, cry for your own sons and daughters, so they shall know the shedding of the blood and sacrifice of my life, so that they shall be in the kingdom of God, not in anywhere, anywhere else. Today we are Christians, wonderful. Today we don't follow the word of God. That is not a good thing. It's wonderful that we are Christians. Because we know Christ is connected in our lives. But we are not connected to Christ through the gospel. And through the preaching of the gospel. Therefore the Bible clearly says in Acts chapter 19. In Acts chapter 19 verses 7 and 8. Acts chapter 19 verse 7. And all the men were about 12. Then the Bible says verse 8. And he went into the synagogue. And spake boldly of the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Paul was going and preaching concerning the kingdom of God. God had a great God had given him the greater power. Jesus had blessed him with the anointing and the fire of the Lord. The day the light had shone upon his life when he fell under the power of God from the horse. Life totally changed. Power of God came upon his life. He started healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out the demons. All manner of things were going on. 
But what exactly is mentioned more? The Bible mentioned that he was going to synagogues and synagogue means all the churches that were there in synagogue and preaching the gospel and teaching the gospel and persuading things concerning the kingdom of God. Making them to understand, my brothers, my sister, you are good Christian. You are a powerful Christian. You know the word of God. You know the Christianity. You are practicing Christianity. You are practicing religion. All that is correct. But you must know the kingdom of God. You must be saved for the kingdom of God. Your soul must be saved for the kingdom of God. That was the purpose that Paul was preaching about. The Bible clearly says, among the churches he visited, even to the churches he started seeing, Acts chapter 20, verse 24 and 25. But he was preaching among the churches the same thing. The churches also should know. Look at Paul's burden. Paul's burden that every man, every preacher, Every synagogue priest and pastor should understand about the kingdom of God. Number two, he was also concerned that every church should know about the synagogue church. And that's what he was preaching. Paul said, Acts chapter 20, verse 24 and 25. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord J Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Gospel is the grace of God upon our life. Gospel is not there to judge now. Gospel will judge us after the death. But now it is a grace. I am a sinner. Still God has not punished me. Gospel says that because of my sins, God will punish me. But I am not perished, not punished. Because of the grace of God that's upon us and upon you. It might be me, it might be you also. So the Bible clearly says, this is the grace of God for you. Through the gospel, that grace has come upon your life. Though you know that you are breaking the laws, though you know that you are breaking the commandments, though you know that you have broken all the laws and all the commandments, yet the grace of God is upon you so that you shall be alive. You shall not be perished. But one important thing is there. That's what Paul said. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. But he was suffering. Trial, tribulation, prison, shipwreck, all the problems, even torn in his flesh. And yet he said, it's a joy. And the ministry that God has given unto him, which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Then verse, the next verse, verse 25. And now behold, I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom. Come on. Kingdom of God. Again, and now behold, I know that you all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of, kingdom of God shall see my face no more. I have come with the purpose to give you and preach the kingdom of God, Paul said. Paul said, my face is not important. I'll disappear now. I'll go away. My work is over because I preach the kingdom of God. Today, so many people are there with the religious background, not understood the truth, don't want to follow the truth. Same like me also commit sins, not able to understand the truth. And God is speaking to us and speaking to you. What he's saying to you? He says, now, behold, I know that you all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. It means we have to give importance to the kingdom of God more than anything in our lives. That one day my soul, one day I will pass away from this earth. My luxury, my fashion, my strength, my beauty, my handsomeness, everything is going to disappear. But where my soul is going to go, I have to think. My soul has to be in the kingdom of God. That must be the decision tonight. This is the first message. On Friday we are going to have another message. And we have no other times. The rest of the things they will pre prepare themselves for the you know, seasonal blessings of God. Knowing about Jesus Christ's birth. And all the things that we are going to see. But the Bible clearly says in Acts chapter 14. In Acts chapter 14 verse 21 and 22. And when they had preached the gospel to that city. And had taught many. They returned again to Lystra. And to Iconium and Antioch. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Paul is explaining, verse 21, And when they had preached the gospel to that city, 
and had taught many. They returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch. The Bible clearly says they came back to all the cities where they had done the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom of God. They went on preaching, Peter, Paul, along with the other disciples. They went on preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to all the cities. And after that is over, the Bible clearly says, Verse 21. confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in faith, in the faith, that they should remember and continue in the faith. Faith makes you to commit your life unto God. Faith makes you to stand firm in your trial and tribulation to love God. Faith makes you to leave the religion practices but look unto Christ who brought salvation unto us and opened the kingdom of God's door. Remember this. If you do not have this faith, you are losing something in your life. This faith has to be strong for the kingdom of God, nothing else. If your faith is not strong to get into the kingdom of God, you are a most, and we are most miserable Christians, having everything known, seeing the miracles, signs and wonders, and deliverances and healing, and there is no reason, and there is no understanding for us. That's what we are thinking. Oh, don't you understand that God wants to tell you and tell me that I must be concerned about the kingdom of God? The Bible clearly says, that faith must be there and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Much suffering. That's why the road towards the kingdom of God is narrow. Trouble. Families don't like. People don't like. When we carry the Bible, say that he's a Bible lunatic man. His mind is gone out of order. He does not know what he's doing. We know what we are doing it. We are worshipping idols and people are saying we know what whom we are worshipping. People are worshipping idols and they are saying, we know whom we are worshipping. You don't know. You are carrying the Bible. You are a lunatic man. You are going and clapping hands and saying, hallelujah, you are gone out of order. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. One day one person was talking about, I went very close to him and I asked him, what is something that is wrong? He said, something is wrong with his brother. He goes there and he claps hands and he says, hallelujah. I said, do you know what is the meaning of hallelujah? He said, I don't know, but they are shouting all the time. It is Christian language. Some word like that. I said, the same word is spoken in the kingdom of heaven. In the heaven, same thing. When you go, you have to say. When I go, I have to say. But if you go only, you can say. If I go there, only I can say. If you don't go there, where we will say? Hallelujah then. You have to understand. With great tribulation, with great suffering, with great sacrifice, with allowing the, you know, so many things of sacrificial, sacrificial life, you have to get into the kingdom of God. That is the meaning of it. The word of the Lord clearly says, Paul was saying the last thing. Remember, he was also encouraging the church of Thessalonica. In all the churches, the first that he explained to the kingdom of God for other churches, in Samaria, Judea, and all other places, then into Antioch and other places, now into Thessalonica. First Thessalonica, chapter 2, verse 12. And final word, then we are going to close down. That ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. My brothers, my sister, read that word again. That ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and to glory. To be frank with you, I am not worthy. To be frank with you, we are not worthy. To be frank with you, we cannot be worthy. But we can make worthy ourselves having the gospel of kingdom of God in our lives. No religious Christian man can say that I know and I'll be definitely going to the kingdom of God. When he reads the scriptures and understands the scriptures, then he will realize that he's a miserable man. He does not know. He's only simply talking, but one leg is in the hell, another leg is on the earth. And he's not going to see the kingdom of God. He is not understanding that. She is also not understanding Therefore, Paul is preaching and teaching to every one of you, go under the trial, go under the tribulation, go under the suffering, have every type of things to go, but don't lose the kingdom of God that is in your hand. Don't lose the kingdom of God that God has already revealed to you through the preaching of the gospel. And the Bible clearly says, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. You must endure all the tribulations, suffering and sorrows and pain and agony and don't feel bad about it. 
Many people think that when you have become believer, you should not suffer. No. If the believers suffer, that is the great blessings of God. Through suffering, God is preparing you for the glory of God. Through suffering, God is purifying your heart, mind and bodies. God is purifying your walk, talk and living standard. God is giving you trial and tribulation and suffering just to make you perfect so that you shall be able to enter into the kingdom of God. Your life shall be set right. My life shall be set right. My talk shall be set right. My life shall be correct. I shall be holy and perfect in the sight of God. Finally, remember, anyone who would listen, Anybody who listens, for them is the kingdom of God. Who does not listen is not the kingdom of God for them. Therefore, Paul was so powerful and powerfully telling the people, if you have ears, hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you and turn yourself to Christ Jesus our Lord. Don't simply hear and forget about it. If you have ears, hear what the Spirit of God is telling you so that you shall follow. Remember Jesus also many times in his preaching, he said like that. What did he say? I'm preaching the gospel, teaching the people. Those who have ears to hear the gospel, let them hear. It means gospel has to be heard by the both the ears. And we can enter that gospel into our hearts and commit our lives unto the gospel so that we shall be saved for the kingdom of God. My brothers, my sister, Paul was telling in Acts chapter 28, verse 22 and 23. Such importance he was talking about. Because Romans, they did not listen. Jews, they did not listen. They were doing the same thing. They were saying that, who is this man? Who is our fellow believer? Fellow Christian, how can he teach us the word of God now? Why is he teaching us about the kingdom of God? Many of you must be saying the same. Many of you must be also thinking the same. What he is teaching us? We know about kingdom. We know about God. We know about Son Jesus. We know we are going to go to heaven. Don't be in darkness. Listen what Paul is saying. Acts chapter 28, 22 and 23. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, we, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed, appointed him a day, there came many to come in, to him into his lodging to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God. Bible clearly says wherever Paul was there, he was testifying about the kingdom of God. Whoever came and wherever he was appointed, he was talking about the kingdom of God. Then the Bible says, persuading, persuading them concerning Jesus, both, both out of the law of Moses and, and out of the prophets. From morning till evening. From morning till evening, he was teaching and making them to understand about the kingdom of God and telling them about the importance that you should be able to understand. He was talking to whom? He was talking to the Jews from morning till evening. He was talking to whom? He was talking to the Romans. Where all the disciples say, Paul, don't go to Rome. Don't go to Rome. If you go to Rome, they are going to put you on the cross and they will make you surely to die. You cannot come back alive. My brothers, my sister. He said, for that purpose, I'm going there. For that purpose, I'm going there. Jesus died for me and saved my soul. Now I go to save the souls of my fellow believers. I know they don't like the gospel. They don't want the truth. But for that purpose, I'm going there. So that they shall know the kingdom of God. They shall know the truth. And if I have to die for the truth, I don't mind about it. That's what Paul was telling. This was his final words. And he said, anyone who listens, is definitely they are going to be saved and they should get into the kingdom of God. For that, my life is spared. Never mind. Acts chapter 28, verse 30 and 31, and we shall close down. Acts chapter 28, verse 30 and 31. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him. Paul was in his own house. Paul was actually in the tent. The word of the Lord clearly says, verse 30. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him. Everybody he received, everybody he spoke, to everybody he gave the gospel, to everybody he gave the testimony. He talked about Jesus, he talked about the kingdom of God. He talked how Jesus came and spared his life so that you shall go to the kingdom of God. Then the Bible clearly says in verse 31, what the Bible says, I will say, Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern or concern the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember this scripture, please. 
Paul was preaching and teaching at the end to everyone those who listen. Now he is in the house. He is getting arrested in the house. They came to arrest Paul because he is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord. And when he was arrested in the rented house where he was preaching the gospel, the Bible says, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Nobody could say anything to him. He was teaching and preaching and explaining the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord. To those who visited him while he was under his own house and it was a house arrest for him. And the Bible clearly says he was preaching about the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord and about the kingdom of God. Today God is saying to you, you have heard about the kingdom of God. Give thought over it. Give importantly, wear your soul tonight. Importantly, when you walk on the earth, do not think about all the luxury and all the luxury that you want to. Many preachers are also doing this mistake. Many preachers are telling, give money, give money. I want to buy this. I want to buy that house. I want to have a TV show. Very good. You are preaching for the gospel. But if gospel is, has to be taken money and done, then I do not know what is the purpose of your faith, that why you are not looking unto God, that God is able to provide you all your needs. Today, even online services are going on like that. As soon as you see online services, you say, please donate, please give. Please tithe yourself. All around the world you are asking tithe for your church. What happened to your own church? What happened to your own offerings? In the offerings you want to build so many other things. Why don't you look unto God in faith? Because your thoughts, when your thoughts are going toward the worldly things, the Bible clearly says, you are and I are becoming enmity to God. When, we, when our hearts are going towards the riches, when our hearts are going towards the luxury and all type of benefits, we become enmity to God because we have given our hearts to the world and worldly riches. Take care of yourself. Have whatever you want to have it. God will surely give it to you. Don't simply keep on praying, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this. No, talk something to God. God, you gave me sufficient. The life is still alive. My, my soul should be saved. I shall be able to go into the kingdom of God. Help me to number my days, as David said. And we shall be able to understand that. And then, Lord, whatever you want to add it, you add it to my blessing. Today, the Bible clearly says, when you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, when you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all other things shall be added unto you. All things. There is no need to open your mouth and say, give me this, give me that, bless me with this, bless me with that. God, why are you not seeing I have no blessings within my life. Why you are not seeing I am suffering? Why you are not seeing I have this trouble? Why you are not seeing my money is taken? Why you are not seeing that we have family problem? Why are you not seeing that we are suffering? Why you are not seeing that there is no need to say that? Because you have already decided to walk according to the righteousness of God, according to the word of God, and when you seek the kingdom of God, all of the things shall be added unto you. Just lift up your right hand and say after me, Father, we thank you for your word about the kingdom of God. I surrender myself to you, to your word, to Jesus Christ my Lord, and to the gospel of God. I will give heed unto the gospel and to the teachings. And remember, there is a kingdom of God. I shall always Meditate upon, upon the kingdom of God. Guide me and lead me. And, lead me and, bless, me tonight. and bless me tonight. Jesus almighty name we pray. Jesus, almighty name we pray. Let's all say amen. amen. Let's give a big hand of praise to the Lord. Thank you Jesus.